is piquing my interest, of course, as always, but you really are a pioneer in this. And I think everyone listening is really looking forward to what we can learn from you. Can you give us a little background on who you are, what you've been doing to bring us up to the conversation? Yeah, so I'm Dr. William Lee. I'm a physician. I trained in internal medicine, which means that I take care of all people, uh, men and women, young and old, healthy and sick. And as a doctor, my own personal goal has always been to try to keep people sitting on the pillar of their own health. And this is a little bit different than uh, how we're trained as doctors, which is to focus on disease and how to treat disease. So my uh, my role as a background, I bring right into this uh, as a physician I bring to the table. I'm also a research scientist. Um, I've spent the last 30 some years uh, working in a field called vascular biology. Vascular just means blood vessels. And the reason that I study a field called angiogenesis, angio is blood, blood vessels, genesis is how they grow. The reason it's important is because we all have 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels packed inside our adult bodies. And wow. these blood vessels are the highways and byways for the oxygen that we breathe, um, and also the nutrients that we eat, they deliver, the blood vessels deliver the things to every cell and every organ. And as somebody who's worked as an advocate to um, use this science of the circulation to improve the tr modern medical treatment of diseases like cancer, uh, vision loss, blindness, uh, diabetes, and wounds that don't heal. This is a problem as people get older, these are all diseases of aging, so to speak. They keep us from aging in a healthy way. Um, I've been involved uh, with the uh, successful development of 44 new FDA approved treatments for cancer, vision loss, and diabetes. And it's really that kind of street cred and that experience that I started to realize something, which was that uh, to uh, treat disease is a little like too little too late and what we should really be able to do is intercept the horse before it gets out of the barn and that's prevention and when you talk about prevention you really can't shouldn't talk about drugs that are expensive not accessible to everyone who needs them and also have side effects and toxicities but you can actually talk about food and that's something that is available everyone needs to eat it's safe and it's really central. Food is central to who we are as humans. It's part of our humanity. And I'm a foodie. I like to cook. Uh, I've traveled all around the world. I lived in Italy and in Greece before. And so to me, um, uh, and my background is Chinese. And so I have this sort of Mediterranean sensibility <laughs> about food. So what I did um, about 15 years ago is began using the same systems that we develop uh, drugs, biotech drugs, very fancy, um, sophisticated cancer treatments. And um, we began throwing foods into the same system. And it's something that people hadn't thought about doing before, you know, keep drugs in their own silo, keep foods right. in their own silo. And I crossed that to start mixing and matching. And I will tell you, Norma, that the big jaw-dropping surprise that I personally had that led me to where I am today is that 50% of the foods that we were studying in these drug development systems were as or more powerful than the drugs that we were studying. So that's food is medicine. I, I sometimes refer to myself jokingly as sort of one of the OGs in the food is medicine space, but that gave me passion because while I'm still involved with developing serious uh, biotech solutions for cancer, um, uh, the reality is, is that something about food that we discover has immediacy. If I told you something about a fruit or a vegetable today, after your listeners hear this, they could put it into action right away. And so I wrote two uh, New York Times bestselling books, Eat to Beat Disease and Eat to Beat Your Diet. Um, both of these talk about not just foods like eat this and eat that, although that's in there. I have lots of more than a list of 300 foods that are in there. But what, it, what I really wanted to be able to bring my audience, the readership, and people listening to this podcast, is that modern science teaches us how our body responds to what we put inside it. 
when we put something bad inside it, it's going to respond in a negative way. It's going to lower our defenses, lower our shields against disease. And when we make better choices to put things that are good for our body, our body responds in by elevating, our, raising our shields, our health defenses are activated, our metabolism is improved, and the power to live better, healthier lives across the entire lifespan is inside us. We need to start with who we are. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing is um, the reverse can happen as quickly. If you have a lot of sugar or you drink, uh, I'm not an alcohol pro-alcohol person, but if you drink enough alcohol, you will physically feel ill. I mean, it is you can you can tell the reverse very quickly. Yep. One of the things, um, uh, you know, I'm totally in your camp. Uh, I'm 78, and I really believe in trying to take ownership as much as I can for my own destiny. And food, obviously, is is a big part of that. And one of the, the things that I would love to hear is if uh, I've done this with some friends where I've gone into their kitchens, into the cabinets, and it's like, you know, they say, I don't know what to do. I don't feel good. I want to lose weight. Blah, blah. And I was like, trust me. Let me go in your cabinet and in your refrigerator and throw out what you should never have there ever again. And then let's go shopping for the staples you should always have. And if you want to have ice cream one day or something like that, never do it in your house because that that's your sacred place. Never do the bad things in your house. So if you were to be with a friend who is just tearing it up with as much junk as you could possibly imagine. And you've just cleaned out his or her cabinets and refrigerator. What are 10 ingredients, foods, whatever that you would say they should have as staples in their home. So at any time, whenever they're hungry, Nothing can go wrong. They're doing it. They'll be able to do it right. What would they be? Start with the, the you could do any order, but I would love your 10, <laughs> your 10 tips and best food to have in the house. Sure. Well, look, first of all, I'm a researcher, so I happen to know uh, I can come up with 10 things, but I have importantly, I happen to know what's in each of those 10 things that science has discovered that helps our body respond by having better circulation, awesome. better yeah. stem cells for regenerating from the inside out, better gut health, uh, antioxidant power to protect our DNA, lowering inflammation or raising our immunity to protect us right. from infection or even for cancer inside our body. So why don't we start at the top? Definitely. By the way, I'm so I, excited. And by I the can't... way, I stepped into this podcast having just gone into my fridge and my pantry to pull out <laughs> something that I could whip together to have a little bit of a, a quick lunch uh, be before we came on. So I just went so through this. this um, practice. Uh, practice makes perfect. So we want to know what that was. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I'll, so let's start with the things that I actually did. Okay. I uh, had in my fridge that came from my pantry uh, some tubes of a uh, double concentrated tomato paste. Um, this is a great way to add umami flavor while capturing the polyphenols and the carotenoids, the lycopene of tomatoes in ultra concentrated form, okay? I buy the Italian kind because they don't add anything like sugar or anything, right. it's just pure concentrate. Right, so basically look for tomato paste that doesn't have sugar because a lot of those right. tomato -y things do add right. sugar. So always look tip. That's at a good the, tip. Always look at the uh, ingredient list for yeah. anything that I'm saying, talking yeah. about, because there's all these hidden ingredients that you need to, um, mm -hmm. if you can't pronounce it, you probably don't want to put it in your body. Right. Right. So um, a tube of tomato paste. Now I actually love um, to use things that can pop up umami flavor. So um, uh, so a couple of things that are in my fridge that can help pop up that nice mouth watery feeling. I have a little tube also of anchovy paste. 
anchovies actually have our great source. Of I love anchovies. Right? It's like the, the gem of the Mediterranean, the sea love- in the sauce, so to speak. And a little tube of this allows you to squeeze a drop out or squeeze a little bit out. And you can just stir it in a little bit yeah. of, out of my pantry, extra virgin olive oil. Of course. Okay. Now, I sell, oil, I sell olive oil, so I'm, I love. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you up and see if, I can, if we can actually, I can, I can play with it because I like to cook. Extra yeah. virgin olive oil is great because uh, it uh, contains polyphenols from the olives, and one of the most powerful polyphenols is called hydroxytyrosol. Now, don't worry about the ke- fancy chemical names. Just know that people like me have studied this. It's in the extra virgin olive oil because it comes from the little bits that are still in the extra virgin form, mm-hmm. hasn't been filtered out. And when we eat that, it actually Im- lowers inflammation. It improves our circulation. It even can cut off the blood supply and starve cancer. Mm-hmm. And all you need is a healthy fat to cook with. Um, so a little olive oil, a little- I'm gonna- I'm going to add a little tip, olive oil tip, because that's my my thing. Um, So in November and December, uh, the new harvest is happening. And we get our uh, shipment of olive oil in. I have an orchard that does a special blend for us. And so what I recommend is... Typically, there's one harvest and that gets sold for an entire year, sometimes for two years, which I absolutely, you know, don't love. I think the the fresher, the better, the higher potency. So when you buy olive oil in November or December from the new harvest, put extra, get extra bottles. If you like a certain brand, get a few of them and put them in the refrigerator until you're ready to use them because it's cold and dark. And what does that do? It keeps it fresh. So when you're ready to go to that next bottle, if you use as much as I do, you will have it as if it was just harvested. It'll keep it fresh, keep the color, keep the essence, keep all of those beautiful, wonderful things that are, are good for us. So that's my little hack on olive oil. What a, what an amazing tip! I you know uh, we normally think about keeping it in a cool dark place, but the refrigerator is a perfect place um, to perfect. keep it right. Yeah, um, and, 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 it, and and you can also put olive oil in a dish and keep it in the refrigerator, and it's sort of like butter. You can spread it, and you can use it that way as well. All right, it turn it kind of. Um, turns into a semi-solid. Yeah, 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 it's great. And and it's more concentrated. So you like tubes and everything for cooking. You can do a tablespoon for that and have like an, enough. Fantastic tips. I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm learning something uh, even as we get started. So, um, so we talked about uh, tomato paste, uh, anchovy paste, uh, extra virgin olive oil. Um, I uh, always have... Um, uh, a little uh, chili pepper flakes. Uh, and the reason is that chili pepper flakes contain capsaicin. This is the natural chemical in peppers that um, light up your tongue. They give you the zing. And it turns out more recent research shows that when you actually, your tongue gets that zing, it it's an activation. It's like a trigger that sends a message to your brain. Your tongue will text message your brain when you actually eat chili pepper flakes or any chili, like sriracha sauce will do the same thing. And, the, and, it, and it text messages your brain and it helps your brain release a hormone, noradrenaline. And this uh, noradrenaline <clears throat> will go down the nerves from your brain down your the side of your neck. You can feel it next time you eat chili. But you'll, you'll feel the tingle go down and as a hormone is released. And that uh, that hormone will activate your body's brown fat. Now, brown fat is a very healthy form of body fat. It's not lumpy bumpy. It's not the uh, muffin top. It's not in your thighs, not in your butt. It's actually way thin and close to the bone. And what brown fat does when it's turned on, it acts like the burner on a gas range. You know, you go click, 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 whoosh. And when when you turn on your brown fat with chili peppers and other foods as well, including tomatoes, what it does is it burns down extra 
energy. It burns down extra calories, extra fat in your body, and it burns away harmful body fat. So a little extra zing helps you, even if, by the way, even if you are a thin-bodied person, a lean person, you can still have extra body fat in the tube yeah. of your body. Yeah. That's called skinny fat. Yeah. And this is that's one of the- a, That's a good one. That's, that's a tip, a right? One. Yeah. So so that's a good one. Um, I keep capers. I keep dried beans. I keep um, uh, uh, I keep um, I, I, I keep tins of of seafood, uh, uh, different like, kinds of seafood, like sardines. sardines yeah, mackerel. I'm a big yeah. I'm, um, and and by the way, a lot of people. This is me as well. When I was a kid, uh, my mom would take me into the. Uh, middle aisles of the grocery store and there'd be all this tuna fish. And when we opened one up, I thought that looks like cat food, it smelled like cat food. And so it really turned me off until I, I actually lived in the Mediterranean for a while, mm. Italy, Greece, South of France, um, uh, Portugal, a yeah. long tradition of exquisitely yeah. cooked and tinned fish packed in olive oil and all these right. other herbs and, and things. And they are beautiful to keep, as really a, a whole meal you get a sure. whole lunch i i agree i uh you know as we all are trying to really get the the right amount of protein and it's so much more than what we think we need and uh one of my favorite things is to put tons and tons of fresh lemon on sardines big sardines um I like the ones that are in the jars, put tons of lemon on it. And it's just so delicious. And yep. you could put a little anchovy or capers and things like that on it. And one jar is like the most incredibly perfect amount of a meal. It where you just get that power of some protein and it's delicious. It's totally delicious. Absolutely. It sounds like you and I could, could fix a quick <laughs> lunch together and have this conversation and, right. and really have a lovely meal. So, you know, a couple of other things that I like to have in my pantry. Uh, excuse me, need to know about the dried beans. Oh, yes. Well, so tell me a little bit about that, because okay. I'm, I'm not a big bean person other than um, chickpeas. But what t give us some ideas okay. for beans. So beans are... Um, uh, uh, are one of the core staple foods that's a common denominator in all of the planet's blue zones. These are the locations around the world that my friend Dan Butner first um, uh, 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 kind of put out to the public as areas where people live long and live healthy as they age. And, you know, people have been searching, what's the secret to it? Well, they have community. Well, they actually have physical activity. Well, they have lower stress. And also they eat um, great food in, uh, they eat together, all right? So all these things count. There's no one magic food yeah. that's silver bullet, but beans is a common denominator. Now what's in a bean, okay? Um, beans actually contain a huge amount of vitamins and minerals that our body needs. But more importantly, it's a good source of dietary fiber and an in inexpensive source of protein. Um, beans can be tra can travel long distances if they're dried. If you go back 2,000 years, back to the Silk Road yeah. that connected China to the through the Middle East right. to the Mediterranean, beans were one of the things that they could yeah. dry and put on camelback, right? So it's a revered thousand year old tradition. Okay, so um, uh, dietary fiber in beans is very important for gut health. It's one of the easiest way to get gut health. If you get beans and you soak them for 24 hours before you cook them, you'll actually degrade some of the phytic acid, which you know um, people like to say they, they don't have as much of this natural uh, protective chemical that beans use to protect themselves. Just get all that stuff away. Mm -hmm. And then you wind up softening the bean. It's faster to cook. Um, you can cook beans, you can stew them uh, in lots of different ways. You can make soup out of them. Bottom line, when you have good gut health, you have whole body health. Our, our gut bacteria, which is 39 trillion bacteria in our body. By the way, we've got about 40 trillion human cells and we've got 39 trillion bacteria. Wow, wow, are, that, that is, that's amazing. That's a good one. 
haven't and, heard and, that one. And, and by the way, you know, so we, you and I, and everyone watching this, we are not quite, we are not only human. We actually are partly bacteria as we walk around in our, you know, in our, in our beautiful garb. And there's a, there's a term for organisms that are part are made of two different things. All right. Part human, part bacteria. And that term is a holobiont, H-O-L-O-B-I-O-N-T. So although you can call us human, we're really holobionts because we walk around with about 50% of us being bacteria. Now, our bacteria, you look, I went to medical school. In medic, When I went to medical school, bacteria were the bane of our existence. Got to memorize them, got to kill them with antibiotics. Now we realize that most of the bacteria that we encounter as humans across our lives, most of them are good and most of them live inside us. Yeah. And when our bacteria, what do they, our bacteria do? They actually lower inflammation in our body. They boost our immune system. And they text message our brain to release social hormones. So there's one bacteria, and this is we're just this is the beginning of a whole new era of research. But there we're beginning to discover certain bacteria. So for example, there's a bacteria called Lactobacillus ruteri. Lactobacillus um, ruteri is actually a normal gut bacteria, but it's also used to make sourdough bread. In mm -hmm. fact, the lactic acid from Lactobacillus right. is what gives the tang to the bread. It's yeah. also, by the way, used as the natural starter for Parmigiano Reggiano yeah. cheese from right. Italy. Yeah. Right. Um, it's also found in some yogurts. And guess what researchers have found? And I, I did some of the research myself with a colleague at Massachusetts Institute of Technology that Lactobacillus ruteri not only improves your immune system, but it text messages your brain. And what it does is that it helps your brain release social hormones like oxytocin. Now, oxytocin uh, is what is released from your brain when you go to the airport and you see a friend or relative you haven't seen for a long time, you run up to them and give them a big hug, right? Yeah. It's the same hormone that your brain releases when you get a kiss, not a peck in the cheek, but a French kiss, a deep kiss, that, that feel good hormone. And it's the same hormone, uh, social hormone that your brain floods for microseconds when you have an orgasm. So, so what are the foods? Let's... <laughs> <laughs> Well, but it's the Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese, a, a, a sourdough bread also contains this. Yogurt can contain this. And you can also find dietary supplements. I mean, the, the bottom line is that, you you know, everything in moderation. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want people to rush out to eat lots of cheese that has salt and saturated right. fats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. You know, we listen, we were just talking about a, a jar of sardines and we were talking about, you know, some a little bit of tomato paste. Everything in moderation yeah. is really better for not only your soul, but actually for your body as well. Yeah, so great that's, one, that's one example of a good bacteria, but there's yeah. many other ones. Yeah, that, that's a great one. And um, so what's your favorite bean dish? Just to, because I'm, I, that's other than popcorn. I, <laughs> it's like, uh, and chickpeas. What, what's your favorite bean dish? Um, you know, I, I love so many different dishes, but the one that, this conversation is bringing to mind instantly is there is a giant bean dish. It's the giant bean. They call them gigantes uh, in Greece. And they, it's a, it's a very rustic peasant dish. Um, they take big um, Greek. Uh, they're, they're like giant. It's not fava beans. They're, they're big white beans, giant white beans. And they, um, they uh, soak them. They uh, uh, cook them slowly in olive oil, uh, onions, a little bit of tomato sauce, and some oregano. And they just stew it down. Mm -hmm. It's a little side dish that if you have a nice uh, side of freshly made sourdough bread um, and your jar of sardines, what an amazing yeah. kind of quick lunch you that's can have. Great. You can always imagine yourself on vacation. That is so, that's so great. I, I, I love that. I like that suggestion. Um, so what else is in that is in right. that pantry? I these are so amazing. By the way, they're not typical. They're very innovative suggestions. I know you're saying to yourself, "I'm a, I'm a doctor. I've done all this research, and she's asking me about my friends." But but this is so um, practical, and you know, and and it does empower us. And the suggestions are very. Um, 
innovative, I think, compared to the typical salmon, da 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 da, you know. All right, okay. here's another one. Whatever else. We're, another, we're ready. I, I always have a few jars or bags of capers. Capers are the little flower buds that come from rocky Mediterranean uh, uh, I islands, usually, uh, Sicily. Pantelur uh, Pantelleria, Pantelleria uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, and Santorini is another place uh, off, off of Greece. They pick these things off of the cliffs. They pack them in sea salt um, or they brine them with a little bit of vinegar um, and they can keep for a long time in your pantry and you soak them up. You want to wash off all the vinegar or all the salt um, and you just chop them up and uh, and you can sprinkle them onto a fish dish, a chicken dish, a salad. They really light up your taste buds. And the reason that they're, they light up your health as well is they have something called quercetin, natural chemical that's super anti-inflammatory, uh, which is really the root cause. Inflammation is a root cause of so many diseases of aging. And so yeah. if you want to actually age well over time and eat well over time, I recommend keeping a little jar of capers. And yeah. by the way, so people might listen to say, you know what, I don't even know what a caper is. <laughs> if I bought one, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Here's what I say, Norma. In today's world, I really encourage exploration of foods that are good for you that you might not know about. No problem. Yeah. If you got a cell phone, type in caper, type in recipe, hit search on Google and then oh, hit the video. Yeah. And somebody's going to teach you passionately yeah. what they do with those capers and show you in their kitchen how to do yeah. it. No excuse. And, yeah. And the and the point is the suggestions you're making. When people go shopping, if they have a list of things that are all going to be good for them and they have them in the house and they come up with some recipes, you can't go wrong. If you have junk in your house, you're going to you're going to not feel good. It's and and, you know, I'm in the I'm in the fashion beauty world and I use my communication. It's like if you want to look pretty. You got to be healthy because yeah. if you're not healthy, you're not, you're not going to look pretty. You're not going to feel good. Right. 100%. Here's a couple of other ones. I keep some dark chocolate, like 80% cacao or higher. Yeah. Because um, although chocolate itself is a confection, the cacao, the more higher percent cacao you have, that's a plant-based uh, yeah. uh, food that comes from a tree it's mm -hmm. a very, eventually, um, somebody, a friend of mine shipped me some cacao pods from Miami. Yeah. Wow. I, they're heavy. They're like a football size. You really? Cut them open, you can shake them. You can hear the beans rattling inside it. Wow. It open. And they're like lychees. It's a, it's a nut with a white rim of flesh around it. And you can actually eat it. Like the cacao fruit mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. nicely kind of sweet, sour, um, really uh, quite interesting. You want to peel that stuff off and then you just ferment it and then you can roast it, but don't do the work yourself. Uh, Have, just buy a, a can, a tin or a, a, a little bag of dark chocolate powder or bits. Yeah. Uh, and it's wonderful because the proanthocyanidin, again, <clears throat> don't worry about the chemical name, but just know that we've discovered this in dark chocolate. When we eat it, that chemical causes our body to respond by releasing stem cells you can double the number of stem cells from your bone ah. that regenerate <laughs> your circulation, regenerate your heart, regenerate your brain. I love that. Right. That's so, good. So, so what do you eat the dark chocolate with? Right. So, uh, and by the way, one of the things you don't want to be keeping in your pantry, I know some, a lot of people do this is, is Halloween candy, right? So just get rid of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and, but the dark chocolate is great. What do I do? I like to mix it, add it to another one of my pantry ingredients, which is coffee beans. Wow. Coffee. Now, let me tell you what I do with coffee and why it's good for you. Coffee is one of the original beverages of the world that's found across different cultures. Yeah. It's very ancient. And coffee has something called chlorogenic acid. Okay. Chlorogenic acid actually is good for your stem cells, uh, cuts off, starves cancer by cutting off the blood supply, slows the aging of your cells. You can actually gain years at the cellular level by drinking coffee regularly every day. Now, I recommend not adding dairy to it. Don't add sugar right. to it. Right. Forget about the, you know, the stuff when, you know, when you, when you do in a drive-by, you get that pumpkin spice seasonal stuff. Look, that's all artificial <laughs> flavorings that they squirt in there. 
All right. It's awful. Yeah. Right. So, but the but the real deal has chlorogenic acid and it really slows your cellular aging. Like who wouldn't want that? Yeah. At any age, you get more vibrancy. Right. Um, so one little tip. I I I listen, we're you and I are like just ping pong. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um uh you want to buy, you want to, if you can, buy organic coffee. You know why? Because the organic coffee not only doesn't have the pesticides right. sprayed on it, but research has discovered that organic coffee has more chlorogenic acid. You get more of the good stuff, not just less of the bad stuff, but more of the good stuff. Now, here, here's why. And this is not well known by people, but by researchers, we know this now. It turns out that um, in Mother Nature, obviously coffee plants in the wild will live with nature. So there's uh, little yeah. little insects that nibble on the leaves and the yeah. stems. The plant uh, res uh, responds to that nibbling by the insects as wounding. And as a wound healing response, the plant makes more chlorogenic acid. Right. So when you actually have natural uh, uh, residents around the plant nibbling at the leaves and stems, right. the coffee bean will have more chlorogenic more stronger. acid. stronger, yeah. When you spray it with pesticides, guess what? No injury, no pests, no nibbling, less chlorogenic yeah. acids. What the good stuff? Yeah. You get organic. Yeah, I, I agree. I was, you know, for many years, I, I drink lots of green tea. I love Japanese green tea. And so I was staying away from coffee. And uh, and then I obviously read very much of what you were saying. Um, and so I thought, you know, I, I'm going to have coffee in the morning, uh, and start my day with the coffee. And one of the things that I think is, is a, a, a tip is that I would say after 12 noon or two o'clock, it may be the time to kind of basta on the caffeine so you can get a good night's sleep. But I agree with you. And I, I also agree the chocolate, I I get as much of, you know, the dark, dark, darkest. I put it in my refrigerator. And you know, when you, you, you're you working and you're mindless and you just have to get up, to kind of distract yourself and you go to the refrigerator. So I'll take a little square from the chocolate and it like does the trick. And I, you know, whatever my wandering to distract myself to get, I'll get something to eat. It's the perfect thing. And it's so powerful that you feel like done. I'm, I'm do, good. Yeah, you, and that's the key. You don't need very much to give yourself that hit of, of health power. Yeah. And that's the, that's the other thing that I think is really important to remember. You don't, we never want to eat too much of anything, even good things, uh, mm. things that are few moderation is really the key to life you mentioned tea that's also in my pantry yeah i love tea uh green tea is one of my favorites um one of the things that was really interesting is that um, we did a study uh, uh assuming to look at the cancer fighting power of, of of tea and we assumed that green tea would of course be better we also assumed that japanese tea would be better than any other green tea <clears throat> it turned out we learned all kinds of surprises. First of right. all, the surprise is that matcha, which is a Japanese yeah. powdered tea, so yeah. whole tea leaf powder. That's great. Is really powerful yeah. because you get the dietary fiber from the entire leaf. Good mm. for your gut health. And and by the way, uh, st uh, uh, people in England have actually studied this. Turns out that matcha in the lab kills breast cancer stem cells. These wow. are the little tiny stem cells that yeah. uh, that can help for breast cancer come back. We don't have a medicine. We don't have a drug uh, out there that can actually do that. But Mother Nature um, uh, has it uh, that we can actually, in the form of matcha, mm -hmm. it's really quite yeah. amazing. We looked at uh, Japanese sencha. We looked at um, Chinese mm -hmm. jasmine tea, both quite powerful. Yeah. We found that when you when you blend those two teas together, now, culturally, you would never find a Japanese team blender working with Chinese husband. But yeah. I'm just telling you, we live, we, you know, we live in a new world of creativity, global. right? Yeah. We're, we're a global so, community. Yeah. You mix them together. Our research shows you get one plus one equals three. You get synergism. You get an even more powerful yeah. um, effect. And then what we found that was really surprising, because we had assumed that black teas would not be that good for mm -hmm. you because they're oxidized and 
oh, all the stuff must be good. Stuff must be gone. Wrong. Mm. Pray, you know, which is a traditional English. Yeah. yeah. Really, really powerful yeah. for your circulation. Helps um, uh, mobilize your stem cells for regeneration. And then here's like a jaw dropper. If you are a tea aficionado, you may have heard of this tea called Pu'er, P-U apostrophe E-R-H, Pu'er. It's actually the name of a tiny village in, in uh, southwestern China. Um, but this is a digestive tea. It's a smoky, ultra-fermented tea. And it's, this has been discovered to improve gut health by, uh, uh, it's, a pro, it's a probiotic food because it actually contains its own healthy gut bacteria yeah. it's called poor so it's so it's actually I, yeah i i i have heard of it uh, the um you know the other good thing about matcha is especially the powder and some of them come in little packets so it's easy to use them is putting matcha in other things um really is a lot of fun too and um what do you put it in I, well, you know what? I, I put it in, I make a nut seed bread that's not bread. It's just nuts and seeds and, mm. you know, psyllium holding it all together. And I, I love bread, but I replaced my, my, you know, hunger for bread with this bread. It is so dense mm. and rich and filled with nutrition. And when you toast it, beyond you, you can have it frozen in the freezer for a long time but i i i put it in i put matcha in there too and it gives it just a little with the nuts and the seeds it just gives it this little edge that's really nice and um but i think creative people can take that powder and yeah. put it into smoothies and everything and make it's a given but i i i love the the fact that all teas really have this potent benefit uh it's great that you expanded that 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 idea of tea it, it's really wonderful i i have um a tea blend for sleep that um really works for some reason. Um, it's sort of a typical uh, blend of the, the usual suspects in tea. And then I have just amped up the tea um, that I've done for friends of mine. A lot of these high powered people that travel and are on planes all the time and they can't sleep. So I've been giving it to them and it's working. So I've I've just amped it up by putting in these French lavender buds that are beautiful. And the tea smells like, you know, the best lavender in, from France. And you, in 30 minutes, you are out and you have this great night's sleep. And the scent, just smelling it while you're, while you're in that I need to go to sleep mode is really great. Teas are teas are really quite special. I, I I love I love that you blended sort of this um the the lavender there because lavender actually has been studied as well. There's a chemical in it called perylene. Uh, it's a kind of a, a natural alcohol, but it actually has been shown in the lab to actually cause relaxation. It causes your uh cortisol levels to actually fall it causes your adrenaline levels to fall yeah. so it makes total sense and by the way i did some research this past summer i went to um salt which is a tiny little village in provence yeah. Yeah. and i was out in the lavender fields you know the bees are buzzing around yeah. and and you're in the middle of this thing and actually you're relaxed just walking right, just being there just being there, yeah. it relaxes you so again you know this is sort of this tie-in from nature mm -hmm. and lavender by the way obviously it's you know, wonderful when it's fresh, but most people don't spend time, uh, uh, you know, wandering around lavender fields, uh, but you can get it dry and that can be your pantry as well. Yeah, I think we it. probably hit 10, but uh, we could, we could probably keep on going. Now, uh, but I, you know what, I, I just really uh, appreciate your take on it and the background uh, about each and the, the value of each. Um, you know, I would love to go back to the angiogenesis 
part of your introduction. I, I don't think we know enough about that and you really are, you know, a lot about it. So can you give us some um, information about the, what, you know, you're looking at when, when it comes to health in that way and what we should know? Yeah. Well, look, um, you know, uh, angiogenesis is how our body grows blood vessels and our circulation, I mentioned, really are uh, re represent the highways and byways for health. <clears throat> when our blood vessels are healthy, we all, all the rest of our body can be healthy. When our blood vessels are sick, not a chance that we can actually uh, have complete health, all right? And so that's how important our blood vessels are. In fact, the other reason they're important is that they're one, it's the first organ in our body, our circulation to form. So when your dad's sperm met your mom's egg and they got together and formed a little ball of cells and those cells started to become the future you, the first organ that gets formed that you can recognize is your circulation. That's like numero uno thing that we formed at the very beginning of life. So that tells you how important it, it, uh, this, this particular set, uh, the function actually is of bringing blood flow. Um, <clears throat> the uh, circulation uh, is also quite amazing. You need to have, uh, there's a lining of our uh, blood vessels. So if you think about like a, um, um, a dress that you're making, you're going to actually line it with something often, mm -hmm. right? And so blood vessels are created the same way. Um, there's an outer casing, and that's what we would see if you saw a blood vessel, but there's an inner lining that is very, very satiny smooth. Right. It's so smooth. It's like um, like an ice skating rink after the Zamboni cleaned it up, and so you can right. actually skate very smoothly. Right. That. that lining is really important because there's blood cells that float through there, and they need to be able to flow. Good flow, good blood flow is good health. Now, when you actually have damage to that lining, it's like having a rip or tear in the lining of your of your of your outfit. You know, it can snag on something, and the snag in your bloodstream that snags on are blood cells or platelets that can cause clotting. And when your blood clots, you can have a stroke, you can have a, a pulmonary embolus, you can have a heart attack. It's dangerous, and in fact. One of the things we're beginning to discover now is that COVID, um, you know, with this crazy thing we just went through, in some people can damage the lining of their blood vessels, damages that slip, which is why we start seeing higher rates of unexpected heart disease and stroke, heart attacks in some people, fortunately not most people. However, this lining is incredibly important to preserve. So what are the things that we can do to help preserve that lining? Well, obviously, um, regular exercise is important. Um, uh, lowering stress puts less stress on that lining. High stress, you know, when your blood is pumping hard because you're worried, anxious, pissed off, it causes sheer stress. It's like taking sandpaper over that slip lining. It's going to rough it up and that's going to be trouble for you later on. So that's why chilling out, finding ways to chill is actually really important. Yeah. Sleep, also critical because when we're sleeping, our stem cells help to rebuild the damaged lining of the blood vessels as well. So we want to get good quality sleep, but food is really, really important. So there are for certain uh, foods that can help you rebuild the lining. Blueberries help us rebuild the lining of our blood vessels. Very important for um, health. Kiwis uh, do that as well. Uh, the, uh, the stuff that's in leafy greens, um, broccoli, bok choy, uh, broccoli rob, uh, uh, cabbage, it all actually helps to reline it. Chocolate, the dark cacao, the dark chocolate cacao helps us reline our blood vessels. S tea also helps us reface, you know, like, like these, the substances in these foods are like that Zamboni that is on the ice skating. For, for those people who are listening who aren't familiar with this, if you've ever, if you've ever been ice skating in your life, you know that when at, at the beginning of a session, the ice is completely smooth. And you can throw a sweater across the uh, rink and it'll go all the way across to the other end. But after you get 20, 30, 100 people skating on it for, you know, like uh, 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 in Rockefeller Center, after like an hour of it, what will happen is that the ice is all roughed up. Now, if you throw a sweater, it just stays right there. So yeah. what happens is you have a little truck called Zamboni that comes up. It's, it's heated. 
and it melts the surface to keep it nice and smooth all over again. And that's what the foods that we can eat can do. They can help our circulation get smooth once again. Now, that's just the lining of the blood vessels. Our body uses our blood vessels as a health defense system. So not too many, not too few blood vessels, but just the right amount to feed all of our organs. If you don't have enough blood vessels, enough blood flow, your wounds won't heal. If you have surgery or a cut, it just won't heal. This is a problem mm -hmm. in people who get older or with diabetes. It's also um, an issue for, that can cause heart attack or stroke or organ damage. Now, um, so what do we want to do? We want to eat foods that can help to nurture more blood vessels to help our body grow more where it needs to. It's kind of like putting grass seed onto a golf course or a country club in order to make that lawn look perfectly smooth. <clears throat> our body can do that. Um, and foods can actually make it grow even faster. So what are some of those foods that can actually do it? Barley can actually help. Um, apples, an apple peel can actually, if you eat fruit peel, it can help our blood vessels grow where it needs to. And because our body's smart, it will never allow more blood vessels to grow when you use food than it needs. It, it just keeps it right where it is, okay? On the other hand, there are certain diseases that are very, very diabolical cancer being one of them. And in with cancer, uh, look, we form cancers in our body all the time and our immune system take, wipes them out. So we never, it never, never is a problem, but occasionally a tiny little cancer cell will hijack our blood supply because without a blood supply, it can't grow. It's about, uh, it, it can only get to the size of the tip of a ballpoint pen without a blood supply. Once it hijacks blood vessels, and I studied this in, <clears throat> in an angiogenesis lab, the tumor can grow 16,000 times in just two weeks. It is literally a trigger, that explosive trigger for tumor growth. So wow. our body wants to naturally starve cancers by cutting off the blood supply. Foods can do it as well. What are some of the foods? Well, we talked about some of them already. Tomatoes, green tea, broccoli, uh, uh, strawberries, uh, blueberries can all, dark chocolate can all help starve cancer by cutting off the blood supply. What is that like? Well, we talked about the country club. You know, if you've got too many, the, the grass is growing too high in some areas. Um, it's like too many blood vessels in, uh, in the club. They would just mow the lawn and keep it, get it right back to where it needs to. Our body will mow the lawn. So if there's any extra blood vessels, it will trim them down, starve the cancer naturally. However, we can eat foods that can boost that big time. And this is where I was talking about looking at that combination of green tea, Japanese and uh, and, and uh, jasmine tea, uh, the, the black teas, all of them can actually help your body achieve this effect. And so coffee in the morning is good for a wake up, slow down cellular aging, good for anti-inflammation, good for your metabolism, flip over to tea. It's a little kinder, gentler, sort of on yeah. the brain and on the nerves. And now you're actually doing cancer starving uh, and also um, relining the circulation. And yeah. this is what the field of angiogenesis is all about. How do we keep that natural balance of blood flow so that we can actually be healthy our whole lives? Yeah, that's a that's that's a really um, helpful visual. Um, I, I have a, a quick question on um, so in my office uh, in the past two weeks we have had a good amount of COVID and today uh, one department just called in sick. And so, you know, I've heard um, different things about uh, people who were taking vitamin D3 in good quantities, might have had a little edge and certain Things, but what from a, a food perspective, I mean, other than the basic immune boosting, is there anything that, I mean, maybe it's nothing, but is there any, any insight? Power ourselves uh, with. Yeah. 
Well, look, anything that boosts our immune system helps us resist any type of infection, invaders from the outside. So yeah. COVID being one of them, but we're also in flu season in the fall. We're also, yeah. uh, you know, there's colds in the winter. And so let's just kind of be general about this to say first, okay. how do we actually raise the shields overall? Blueberries, by the way, is an excellent way of raising our immunity while lowering inflammation because infections that we get from viruses will cause um, not only the the uh, the the uh, organism to get into our body, but it causes inflammation. So blueberries, just a fistful of blueberries a day in the morning, however you have it, yeah. is a great way to actually get stronger. In fact, it's been shown even in athletes, it improves yeah. their immune system. And now, here's I, I have a hack. A okay, blueberry please. hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have blueberries every day. I'm, I love them. I, uh, but I highly recommend looking for organic frozen blueberries. And if you have frozen in the refrigerator, you can use them in smoothies, everything. And even sometimes I just put them frozen ones in a little cup and suck on the frozen berries. Yummy with a little bit of the chocolate, by the way, is like a great dessert treat that is perfect. But frozen blueberries, organic in the freezer all the time, you're good. What a great suggestion, Norma. And by the way, Here's the other thing that people should know about frozen uh, foods. When it comes to the polyphenols that are really good, that activate your health, body's health defenses, improve your metabolism, most of the frozen foods that you would actually get um, really have their nutrients preserved. And the reason yeah. is they, they're picked and flash frozen. Frozen, yeah. Uh, and, and actually they're, they're, they're locked in. You know, you talked about the fridge. They're, they're locked in, um, uh, in a way, even Early. fresher transferred. Yeah transported them and put right. them in a plane. And or they're, they're dying. They're, they're dying. So the, by the time they get to whatever your favorite stores and they're dying on these, on these tables, Palettes, yeah. it's like, it's like the, the, they're just dying every day and just getting them flash frozen. Like you said, it's yeah. just, if, if you have a, if you have a farmer's market, you'll find blueberries come out in the summer and then they're, they're, they're not, they're picked fresh and they're, they don't travel very far. No, no. So you actually, yeah, but, different. Very, yeah. yeah, but the, but the blueberry, the frozen blueberry hack, the organic one is a phenomenal tip organic, more the good stuff because you know, it's more grown in nature. Um, uh, it, it's flash frozen. So the nutrients are locked in and they're also less expensive. So you can actually, you yeah. know, have them a more affordable for a lot. Yeah. I use them for everything. They're really great. great. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what can you, so, uh, on the COVID thing then, um, basically do the teas and all of the things you talked about, because that's what now is in everybody's pantry and they they're going to just be fortified by what they have in the yeah. house and stay yep. away from like maybe stay away from sugars that are obviously not healthy and some sugars in um, dried fruits are yeah. a little intense and maybe not so great. Yeah. Now, listen, we started this podcast talking about, you know, we wanted to talk about good things, but um, you know, you had said, what about the things that get removed uh, to leave the good things? Well, look, let, let's talk about that. What were you talking about in, you know, uh, protecting yourself from infection? Yeah. It turns out that many of the harmful things, the things that are not so good, the things that you don't really want in your house, if you snack on them outside once in a while, you know, go for it. But spend most, sp yeah. sp spend most of your time um, building up your defenses. You're, you, you can take a hit every now and then. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But here's the thing added sugar, artificial preservatives, artificial coloring, artificial flavoring, these ultra processed products that you find in so many foods that you just have, all you have to do is look at the ingredient label on the side of the box or the bag, and it'll, it'll, it will reveal itself to you. You don't want to have those because they've been shown to lower your defenses, lower your immunity. And the way that it does this is by uh, picking off your gut microbiome. These substances, including artificial sweeteners, not just added sugar, but even aspartame, uh, uh, saccharin, all yeah. those kinds of things, they kill our healthy gut bacteria. And by the way, remember we talked about the gut bacteria makes your brain release all these social hormones. Is yeah. it any wonder why if you eat a lot of sugar, you're just in a bad mood, crappy yeah. mood, you're not feeling totally. good, well, right? Your, brain, your brain's changed. Yeah. And, so, and, and the question is, 
you know, you talk about Halloween candy and Halloween's coming up and we're poisoning all of these kids that are coming around. Like, it's terrible that that parents aren't just protesting you know, be, you know, you know, it would be great. And maybe you and I will hatch this as an idea. You know how they did the ice uh, bucket challenge uh, uh, for <laughs> LS? Yeah, we should actually do a Halloween challenge and, 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 and find health, you know, challenge people to put to give away healthy foods uh, for Halloween for the neighborhood. Yeah. Because, you know, we're all sending a message that um, there are better choices to be made by the grownups that actually teach kids what's good for you. So let's uh, let's make that let's get some suggestions. So if some kids are coming to your house, what would you have ready for them? You know, um, I think uh, tree nuts, little tree, little bags of tree nuts, like or or trail mix. Got to check, check it carefully. It doesn't yeah. actually have lots of additives and stuff yeah. in there. Sugar. Um, I think if we could find small giveaway packs of uh, like the kind of stuff they give you on an airplane. Yeah. Um, that's actually a good way to put something in that they can snack on mm -hmm. and it's tasty. Um, same thing, little bags of dried fruit that aren't yeah. sweet. Raisins and yeah. Raisins, uh, uh, cranberries. Uh, yeah. They even have little things of blueberries now, little packets. Those That's a way of conveying that sweetness, you know, that yeah. little sweet hit that people want, um, but also having something that is giving more good stuff to their body. Mm -hmm. You know, we probably uh, uh, don't send that message strongly enough, which is, you know, uh, uh, that dried fruits, when they're properly done and not eating too much of it, right. um, it's a wonderful way to actually build gut health as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and figs and dates are, you know, they're really, they have nutritional value. Yeah. In, again, Dried so figs. The whole, yeah, dried figs, amazing. Cutting them up and putting them into salads is really great. But I think kids really, um, I, I, I make um, sweet potato ice cream and without without cream and um, and blueberry ice cream, and I do it with almond milk and you know just whip it up and create this thing you put it in the freezer and put stuff on it and kids when they don't know if you say it's ice cream and it tastes really good and you have nuts and goodies on top even little crumpled pieces of chocolate it it's just changing sort of the type of the amount of sugar they're experiencing the type of sugar right 100%. critical yeah, yeah yeah so what what is a, a, a longevity hack you feel is probably the most important um, that you can think of right now? I can think of a couple of them. Uh, I, I will start with one fundamental one and I'll go to a food one. I think staying physically active is very, very important. Take the stairs and, instead of the elevator, depending on how tall, how far up you li live. Um, go for a walk after dinner every day. You don't need to work out. Don't you have a trainer go to the gym? You, If you just took 30 minutes after dinner and walked around the block or even around your house, that over the decades actually pays itself off because use it or lose it, we need our muscles to be strong as we get older. Um, that's one of the things that happens. And as people age, as they, their muscles start to get thinner and weaker, keep them up. And you need protein along with that as well. Um, the other thing I would say is uh, really kind of a, uh, uh, talked about coffee, slowing down cellular aging. Anything you can do to kind of slow down that natural process is good. You know, it's kind of adds, adds seconds, seconds, minutes, uh, hours, and, mm -hmm. and, and months to your life. Look, that's every every little bit counts. And then I'll tell you a little hack that I actually use myself. Skip a skip a couple, a few meals every week. Skip a breakfast a couple yeah. of times a week. Skip a lunch a couple of times a week. You know, if you have enough, you can even skip a dinner. And the reason is caloric restriction. And I'm not really hardcore biohacking about mm -hmm, the percent, mm -hmm. but you know what? Honestly, if you don't feel like you need to eat breakfast, skip it. Yeah. Why is that good for aging? Well, un decreasing the amount of calories allows your metabolism to reset 
and the program for aging to reset itself, every little bit where you give, just unpack, unload yeah. that engine allows you to reserve a little bit more energy and spring back to be mm -hmm. a little bit more youthful. So not a big deal. Listen, um, when I was training in medical school, Norma, I can't tell you the number of breakfasts I'd skip because I was just too much in a hurry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or you, I'm sure, listen, in, in your world, you've been so busy. I'm sure. You've been much, time. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. I, and I actually, um, if, if anybody listening uh, wants the recipe to nut seed bread, that's one of my uh, hacks because what I'll do is I don't, I'm so busy during the day and um, I'll have maybe a smoothie in the morning or, uh, or a coffee or tea, but then I'll have two slices of the nut seed bread and it's so filling that that's all I'll have until maybe I have sardines, the, you know, that bit of sardines. And I, I feel completely full. I don't feel hungry. And uh, I think nut seed bread is a great way to eat a little bit and get enough sort of satisfaction and not stress out your digestion by having a meal for lunch and breakfast and it's like too much, but a little bit and there's psyllium husk in there. So it's great to keep you regular and sort of another thing that's really helpful. I agree with you on not being strict about it, but using your judgment on. So how often do you think you, you kind of skip meals in a week? I skip uh, probably, I would say two or three times. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, an enforcer about it. It's kind of natural to me. Depends on my schedule. Uh, yeah. I, I often, you know, when the meal I skip is breakfast, a lot of times it gives my body a little extra time overnight to reset my metabolism, yeah. get my gut and my immune system in shape. Um, and, uh, and I don't, I don't notice it. The key, if you're actually skipping a meal is not to overeat afterwards. <laughs> right. But I, but I do, I think what happens is doing it a few times becomes uh, comfortable and then you're you already know what that experience is like and that it's not not so difficult to do um, so any I'm I'm so thrilled this was great and so informative and if you want to give us some final statement about what you're doing or something that is really, out of the box that you're you've been exploring, we would love to hear it. And I'm and again, this has been so much fun. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been a real pleasure, Norma. I, it's an honor to be on your podcast. And people who are interested in learning more about the work I do in food as medicine, please come to my website, Dr. Dr. William Lee L I dot com. I, that's my handle as well, Dr. William Lee. I offer free master classes. Uh, I do all kinds of social postings of when I'm traveling, when I'm doing research, to, you know, practical stuff that um, I want people to see, you know, how I do it. And if I can share a little bit of mm -hmm. my practices that, you know, you might resonate with, uh, that that makes that's part of my mission. And then for people that are really ready to kind of make a commitment, I teach um, an online course called Eat to Beat Disease Course. It's a deep dive for a month. You can find it on my website or on my social. Um, but listen, my, my whole thing is to be able to convince people that science is teaching us you can love your food to love your health at the same time. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. This has been